it's Marley from the Energy Boutique with your energy and ascension forecast for Sunday, October 13th to Saturday, October 19th. So last week we had Jupiter, the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, blessings, go retrograde in Gemini energy here on the 9th. And of course, this is going to have us reflecting, reviewing, revisiting ideas, information, knowledge, opinions from the past. We are definitely learning to, again, go back to the tough love life lessons that we've already learned the hard way and actually pluck out the particular wisdom and knowledge that we need to integrate into this present moment to prevent us from repeating past patterns, past behaviors, past mistakes. Jupiter wants us to grow. He wants us to evolve. But this reflection back means that there isn't going to be a whole lot of new growth in the external realm because the growth that needs to take place now needs to take place place within us. We also had the first quarter moon pop off in Capricorn energy here on the 10th. That was an activation point where again, the restlessness kind of led us into this burst up boil over point. The first quarter moon is always a point of realizing where we need to take action, where we need to make moves. And in Capricorn energy, this had everything with to do with our to do list. We have a list going of things that we need to wrap up, the loose ends that we need to tie up, the doors that we need to close on old ideas, old situations, old circumstances, old structures of the past that that old version of self had built and created. Yes, we do want to think about our long-term goals, our long-term ambitions, because that's what Capricorn energy is all about. But right now we have a responsibility to boss up, to do the hard things, which is clean sweeping the past not necessarily under the rug, but in an appropriate spot that it's not going to come back and bite us in the ass just when things start getting good. And of course, we have Pluto, the great transformer himself, coming out of his retrograde and going direct at 29 degrees of Capricorn energy. That's taking place here today on the 11th. So if you're with me here Friday evening, if you're here with me in the chat, I want to thank you so much for being here. But today is a very pivotal day. And considering that the last three days were back-to-back energy shifts and considering the fact that we've had a very extreme solar flares pop off, There has been an intensity here over the last couple of days. And of course, we're wrapping up this, you know, Mercury and Libra energy. We will be shifting into Scorpio energy here in just a couple of days. And we are again now on the other side of the spectrum when it comes to the scales that Libra energy, Libra season has us fluctuating in order to find that sweet spot, that balance point, that harmony. So We are going to start putting the pieces together here a little bit this week, starting off with the fact that on the 13th, Mercury will be moving into Scorpio energy. That gives us an opportunity to blend our intellect with our intuition to kind of peel back the layers of some of the, let's call it blockages in our headspace. We're going to put the detective hats on. We're going to go deep in our psyche. We're going to pluck out old memories, old narratives, old dialogues, old belief systems that are blocking us from actually moving on. Even more than that, we just inherently know the right answer. We know what we have to do. We know what is true in the Scorpio energy. So a lot of the things that we've been undecided about because of that Libra energy, we are going to bring full circle. Yes, we may have some questions that we kind of have to, you know, research and explore. Yes, there may be some truths that we have to unearth. Yes, we may have to kind of, you know, ask the deep seated questions in order to get the answers that we actually need to feel informed enough to make a choice to make a decision. But nonetheless, the Scorpio energy being a fixed water sign is going to help us stabilize not only our headspace where Mercury is concerned, but our heart space where this water energy is concerned. And yes, it's going to be intense. Yes, we're going to have some I'm going to call them shocking revelations be revealed to us because Scorpio is all about unearthing those deep seated secrets. We are definitely going to arrive at a lot more clarity than we've been sitting in for the last little bit. Now, 
We're also going to be building towards the full moon in Aries energy that will be taking place on the 17th. And that's going to officially close the door on the full moon lunar eclipse in Pisces energy that we are currently under the influence of. So that full moon in Aries, of course, is going to be a major pivot point on realizing again, where this new version of self is emerging, where we have to let go of the old aspects of self, the old relationships that that old version of self had created, the old world that that old version of self had created. The Aries energy is a fire sign. It's a cardinal fire sign, which means that we are ready to boss up into a new warrior type of moon and spirit to close the door on the past and get that spark, that fire, that flame kind of rising within us in order to initiate a new path and moving forward. The full moon is going to be a releasing point. It's also going to be an illumination point. So we can expect a lot of clarity to come at us, good, bad, or otherwise, that will help us kind of form new thoughts, new opinions, new plans, new strategies on how we want to handle life. Now, on the exact same day, the 17th, Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money, she's going to be moving out of the Scorpio energy that she's been in, helping us to do a deep dive in our heart space to see what needs to die, what needs to end, what needs to grow, what needs to be born in order for us to be happy again, for us to create a realm of safety and security, for us to create a realm where happiness and joy and pleasure are more of a thing than it's been in the past. And yes, we've had some serious heart activations with Venus in Scorpio energy, but those heart activations are illuminating to us where it is that we've outgrown certain people, places, and things of the past, and where it is that we're being called to pursue new wants, needs, and desires. This will be the last full week of Libra season. And I don't know about y'all, but I'm pretty happy about that because the more we get away from this Libra energy, the more we get away from the eclipse energy, the more clarity, the more stability, the more certain we are all going to become. So we definitely still have a lot going on, have a lot to process, but this holding pattern that we've been in, this confusion that we've been in, probably going to be dissipating the more we kind of move into these new energy shifts, these new transits, especially under that full moon in Aries, kind of closing the door on what needs to be kind of, you know, nailed shut upon in order for us to initiate a new path, something new that this new version of self is very excited to pursue. So with all of these energy shifts, of course, there's going to be a lot of ascension symptoms that are going to kind of, you know, rear their ugly head, show us where it is that we're having a hard time processing these new energies, these new ideas, these new heart activations, these new desires. Again, the ascension symptoms are illuminating to us where there's an energy blockage due to repressed emotions in our physical form, the aches and pains and the discomfort that gets illuminated with these ascension symptoms, trying to help us unpack where it is that we need to dig up those old emotions, those old memories in order to free up the space for the energy, the chi to actually move freely in our physical form. Before we dive in to the assumption symptoms of this week, I just want to take a moment to thank you. I want to thank you for being here. I want to thank you for liking, for sharing, for commenting, for dropping beautiful emojis in the comment section below. I want to thank those of you that continue to give me your love, to give me your support. Now, again, not going to spend a whole lot of time on it, but I just want to remind you that my YouTube channel is in fact under attack. I have lost 4,000 views in the course of about three weeks. I have seen such a limitation on the amount of comments that I normally see in the comment section below the videos. And I know why that is because I talk about a lot of the things that of course don't support the narrative that, you know, YouTube and the big corporations want us under the influence of. I get that. But I also just want to thank those of you that have donated to the channel. Special shout out to Susie Q. I want to thank you so much for your ongoing continued support. It really does make up the world of difference considering the fact that YouTube has not been nice to me as of late. So I am trying to think of different ways to go about, you know, making sure that the information gets in front of those who need it. And of course, I am going to welcome you to jump over to my Patreon. Even as a free member, you're going to at least get the notifications of all the content that I put out there. You're going to get a preview of a lot of the paid content that I have over on my Patreon as well. And I'm kind of considering whether I should 
start up my um, Spotify channel again. I used to stream all of these energy forecasts, not only on Spotify, but on the Apple iTunes as well. I did pull that off many moons ago. I think it's been like two or three years uh, since I had my content on those particular channels, because honestly, I wanted I wanted it all to be on YouTube so that I could get paid for the energy and effort in which I'm putting in. But seeing as I'm not getting paid anymore by YouTube, I figure it's, you know, probably a good time to kind of spread the information far and wide and especially kind of rise up in the face of this particular challenge of trying to be silenced. I really don't appreciate Mr. YouTube trying to silence me. I don't appreciate anybody trying to silence me. Um, and that just makes me want to talk louder and talk more. So you may find over the next coming of weeks that if you previously listened to me on Spotify or on iTunes, that you find me over on those particular avenues as well. We may as well just shake up the system because I will not be backed into a corner and I certainly will not be silenced. Um, that being said, just wanted to remind you that again, made some changes to the content in which I put out there for the month of October. I am going to recommend that you download your energy guide according to your zodiac sign. All of the October energy guides, they were once audio zodiac forecast. We're not doing the audio anymore. My voice can't take it. So I did create workbooks, EE guides, energy guides, if you want to call them that for each zodiac sign so that you know when we're moving into a week such as the one that we just had and the one that we're about to have where we have all of these energy shifting you can consult your energy guide and it's going to tell you exactly where it's taking place in your solar chart exactly what to expect exactly where in your life this particular energy is going to manifest and so i do really encourage you to kind of stay ahead of the game stay in alignment with these energies it is better to roll than be dragged. Okay, with all that being said, let's waste no time. Let's jump into the ascension symptoms that we can expect to pop off this week. So I just wanted to kind of, you know, remind you that we are breaking all kinds of records when it comes to the solar cycle in which we've been in all the uh, predictions that, you know, us reaching certain measurements in the solar cycle, they've all been blown under the water. And if you, you know, have the app, the Space Weather Live app on your phone, you're going to realize that you've been receiving notifications back to back most days, especially dating back to that new moon solar eclipse. Things have been popping since that eclipse energy started in September, carried into October. We're still kind of in it. Like even when we reach the full moon in Aries energy here on the 17th, that only closes out the full moon lunar eclipse and Pisces energy that we had. We are still going to be very much under the influence of the new moon solar eclipse in Libra energy until the end of the month. Basically, we have the new moon in Scorpio popping off November 1st, definitely in that Halloween window when the veil between all of the dimensions kind of fades out and we get to access information from the higher realms. Very interesting dynamic, if I do say so myself. And of course, that new moon is the dark phase of the moon. And in Scorpio energy, that is where change and transformation takes place. So all of us that have been kind of in this state of paralysis, in this state of delusion and confusion, we are definitely going to see the energy pick up. We are going to see the circumstances kind of, you know, start escalating in our physical realms. So again, you kind of have to be careful what it is that you wish for, because everybody wishing for clarity, everybody wishing for change, everybody wishing for transformation aren't really going to be prepared for what is coming at us here very quickly. We are going to see an acceleration with the events because, again, there's this maneuvering effect that needs to happen in a short amount of time because Pluto, the great transformer, he's at this 29th critical crisis karmic degree. It's a mastery degree. It's a perfection degree. We have only a couple of weeks to close the door on the past to really kind of crumble those long-standing foundations and structures that at one time were giving us stability and support that now are kind of acting like a jail, holding us back, really limiting our ability to move on and move forward. 
So there's going to be a lot happening. I would suspect that the solar flares are definitely going to continue to be popping. We are going to continue to be breaking those particular prediction records. And again, we just want to kind of understand that those solar flares popping off are helping us to burn away the heavier energies, the heavier thoughts, the heavier emotions of the old world, of the old programming, of the old conditioning. That's why it hurts. That's why it doesn't feel good. That's why it's very uncomfortable to be an awakened being at this stage of the game, because of course, we're alchemists, we're energy transmuters, but the energy needs to free flow through our vessel. We are the conduits, if you will, and the energy blockages that we have in our physical form, in our cellular memory, due to our pain and trauma patterns and programs from our upbringing, that is where the energy gets stuck. That's why it hurts. That's why the aches and pains are so uncomfortable because it's trying to draw attention to that area of the body so that we do the work in unpacking the residual energy stuck in our physical form. So those solar flares are no joke. And of course, they perfectly align with all of the major planetary shifting going on. And especially the last three days of back to back energies, we have seen a peak potency in the solar energy coming into our cosmos. So we're going to have to just realize that, yes, that is a natural and organic type of cycle that is unfolding, but we also have to consider the extra added electricity that was added into our atmosphere over the last course of this week with the evildoers trying to jumpstart, literally speaking, all of these storms that they are using to basically clear cut certain areas, certain uh, locations down to rubble. Why? Well, I fear that, you know, if I if I actually say what's going on, that my YouTube channel will be totally decimated. So let's get a little bit cryptic about it. We have to understand that the latest storm that was kind of created out there in the wilderness uh, had a mission and it was a mission to kind of displace a lot of the red votes. And if we take a look at where that targeted area, where that landfall of that storm was, it's pretty hard to get all of those people to cast votes in a particular area, particular timeline, if you will, if they don't have houses, if they are living in neighboring states, if you will. So there's one reason. We also have to understand that there's a multitude of reasons going on, especially with other areas, uh, specifically targeting USA. And, you know, we want to talk about the NC storms that happened not too long ago. A lot of that is due to what is under that land that they want access to. Well, how are you supposed to get the goods from the land when you have communities living on top of those wonderful, potent resources? Well, I know you removed the homes. We watched this take we, we literally watch this play by play take place in Hawaii. We know what that's all about. It's the same thing. And had we actually been on the timeline that we're supposed to be on at this particular juncture, which of course we're not, we're like three timelines behind at this juncture, we would have had the power kind of reverse. We would have had somebody step in and actually use those particular tools to minimize that major, major storm. And we would have seen that storm pivot in a big way. But of course, we're still under the guise of this, you know, dark force agenda. And again, three timelines away from where it is that we should be. So it was no surprise to me that again, we didn't have the quote unquote, gooder people step in and uh, take control of those particular weather systems. And I'm trying to be, you know, very hint, hint, nudge, nudge here. So that is one reason. Now, we also have to consider the fact that the U.S. is under attack for a good reason, meaning they're going through their Pluto return. You know, we talked about the 248 years that it usually takes an empire or a civilization to totally collapse. And, you know, this is where the U.S. of A is at. The power and control that the U.S. A has had for a very long time is obviously shifting. Um, you know, we have to consider the fact and remind ourselves that over here in North America, we're just a Petri dish. We're just a, a hamster experiment for those evildoers that are located across the pond here. And this is nothing new. We've been, you know, under the guise of this, you know, experiment for many, many decades, many, many years. 
And we are watching things come full circle here, especially where the power and control of the U.S. of A. is rapidly changing. So again, just a little bit of a reminder, we have multiple layers of endings and closures taking place. We have so many different endings, so many different chapters that are just at the tail end of actually being completed before we can jump into something new, that this is why there is this holding pattern, the state of paralysis, this quote unquote negative force energy um, really kind of hitting home at this particular point in time. So with all that added electricity into the air, it's it's definitely, you know, feeding off of the solar flares, feeding off of these energy shifts, and it's drying us out. It's drying out our skin. It's drying out our eyes. Again, we've been talking about this for a couple of weeks now. It feels like we've been wind burnt. I want to talk specifically about the itchy, dry eyes and burning lips that many of us have been having. And a lot of that is just because, again, there, there's a lot of electricity in the air. And it's really just, you know, kind of sucking the moisture, not only out of the cosmos, which I think is an oxymoronic thing, seeing as, of course, hurricanes and the storms in which we've been watching kind of, you know, take place all over the place. It, they're water related. You know what I mean? So how can we, it's, it's a water and air storm. That's what hurricanes kind of are. And, you know, how can we have this much dryness if there's supposed to be that much moisture in the air? Well, it's because, again, there's been an, a falsity, an extra amount of electricity added into our atmosphere at this particular time. And we're definitely feeling it. So those itchy, dry eyes are likely con to continue. The dry, burning lips where, you, you know, I, I don't know about y'all, but like I keep my lips kind of lubed up, you know, just just trying to keep the moisture in and it ain't working. It feels like my lips could crack and start bleeding at any freaking time. And I hate it and it doesn't feel good, but we're in the season and we're in the chapter where again, we have a couple more weeks to go of this and then we're going to be pretty much oversaturated with moisture. We're going to be retaining fluid. We're going to be over emotional because of course we're about to jump into Scorpio season, which is a water season. So we're currently in an air season. It makes sense that everything feels dried out. It makes sense that our eyes are dried out. Again, our eyesight, our perception, our perspectives are changing. And, you know, with this Mercury energy moving out of Libra and moving into Scorpio, we're going to finally get some things off of our chest, too. We've been holding a lot of energy in our mouths, biting our tongue, so to speak, not wanting to rock the boat. Well, those days are very much coming to an end here very quickly. And a lot of the energy that we're holding in our mouths are affecting this like burning lip sensation. So, you know, there's been a lot of health issues popping off as of late. And a lot of that, I would say, are, you know, mainly due to the, the solar flares. Even a lot of people who aren't really in the know of the energy shifts, in the know of the, you know, solar events, in the know of what Ascension even is, they're coming down with a lot of health related issues, specifically a lot of heart activations, a lot of heart issues, a lot of hypertension, a lot of blood pressure issues, a lot of irregular heart beats, a lot of that because Venus, who rules over the heart space have been giving us all of these heart activations because she's in Scorpio and we have to peel back the layers of our heart space to get real and raw and vulnerable with what it is that we actually want, what we're passionate about, what we truly desire. And just when we realize that we put in to comparison where it is that we're currently at with the people, places and things that we currently have contributing to our overall discontentment, to our overall unhappiness, to our overall insecurities. And we're realized now, oh, shit, something's got to end. Something's got to die. I got to close the door on some, you know, topics and themes, some people, if you will, in order for me to have the space to actually go after these new wants, needs and desires. Heart activations are no joke. And the energy of a heart activation could be affecting A, the heart, B, blood pressure, C, your chest, you could have a coughing fit, and D, the pain in between your shoulder blades in the back. Highly suggesting that, again, you're offloading a lot of old pain, old trauma that you've been carrying on that heart space. There's been a lot of dizziness, a lot of, I want to call it surrealism. It's almost like you're in a dream, but you're not. 
and it's not a very good dream if you if you are. Um, it feels like there's a little bit of confusion and delusion still happening there. It feels like the world is kind of like off kilter a little bit. We're definitely super dizzy. We're not seeing things in the way that they actually should be seen. There's a little bit of distortion taking plain, place, not only in our visual field, but just in our headspace. We're just Again, the scales of Libra season and the scales of Mercury, ruler of the headspace in Libra energy, were teeter-tottering back and forth and back and forth. And that up and down is giving us kind of seasickness. And again, when you come off of the sea being up and down and back and forth and all, you know, swished all around, and then you stabilize, it takes a little bit, it takes a while for our vision, for our state of stability to actually be anchored in. We're still kind of floaty in our headspace. Of course, there's been a lot of pressure in the head. Many people having, you know, sinus issues, having some sniffles, if you will, having a lot of congestion in that sinus cavity. That's just third eye activations. We're bringing new intuitive insights online. We are gaining more information and knowledge that we may not be able to articulate and understand as of yet, but it's in there. Those download packets are in there. They're just trying to pop off so that we can start making a little bit of sense about it. But there's definitely just a lot of ear clicking, a lot of ear pressure, again, kind of adding to the dizziness, the vertigo situations, if you will, just feels like we're like in bobblehead situations and we can't stop that bobblehead from moving back and forth. And of course, we're holding a lot of tension in our neck spaces. There's a lot of aches and pains. Our shoulders are bearing the weight of the world that we just don't know how to get off and unpack. And that in itself is just creating a little bit more discomfort in our upper realm than we're used to and than we actually want. Of course, the aches and pains in our joints in our physical form, in our lower extremities are due to the fear, the uncertainty that we currently are experiencing. And again, it's been a long-term life lesson, a long-term mission as of late to be calm, cool, and collected in the face of uncertainty. We have to be okay with not knowing. We have to be able to take a step forward in a different path, in a different direction, not knowing where it's going to end up. This is, again, about trust and faith and just realizing that if we continue to stay where it is that we've been, that we're only ever going to get what it is that we've already got. And many of us have determined that we no longer want that. We don't want to settle for that, which means that we have to do something different. But our intellectual mind space wants to have a good plan. It wants to have all the details. It wants to know all of the you know obstacles and challenges that we could face. But here's the thing. That means that you're not trusting the energy. It means that you're overactive in your headspace. And the more you live in your headspace, the less you're trusting your intuition. Your intuition is a state of being present, is a state of just being and trusting that whatever it is that you need to face, whatever it is that you need to experience, that you are not only well equipped to do so, but that you wrote it into your plan as your higher self before you ever incarnate it in this physical form. So although our ego intellect needs to know all of the details, needs to know the highs, the lows, the everything in between, our soul self just needs us to be just needs to remind us that we wrote this story for our evolvement, for our growth, for our expansion. And the more we question, the more we try to think, the less magic are, is actually going to infiltrate into our present day and kind of create the situations and circumstances that our higher self knows that we need to be experiencing. So again, with this Libra season, with Mercury still in Libra, it's hard to find that, you know, middle ground between our headspace and our heart space. Um, we're going to have an extra added emphasis on kind of getting in alignment when Mercury moves into the Scorpio energy and we get to blend our intellect with our intuition. I want to talk about the fact that we've had some pretty potent emotions take over us, whether it's fear, whether it's sadness, whether it's grief, it could be even excitement and mania. Um, either way, there's an over exaggeration of our emotional state. And a lot of that is due to Jupiter going retrograde. A lot of that is due to, again, the over abundance of electricity in the air. Electricity is, you know, kind of rapidly making our neural pathways pop off in a way that isn't natural or normal for us. And in turn, there is this acceleration of our inner realm 
And because it's not a familiar feeling, there's a lot of fears, doubts, and insecurities coming up due to the process of realizing what we have to end, what we have to put behind us, what things are actually, you know, coming to a completion point. There is this overwhelming emotional wave that continues to crash upon us and make us feel a little bit cray cray a little bit raw, a little bit more vulnerable than we're used to being. You could find that you're laughing all of a sudden and then just want to turn into tears for no good reason. You could be in a very good mind state and then all of a sudden feel that ball in your throat kind of, you know, trigger wanting to cry. Whichever experience you're having with your emotions, just know that they're not stabilized. We are at the part of Libra season that, again, just a couple of days ago when we reached that 15 degree, which is the halfway point of that season, we were at a little bit, I'm going to call it at a standstill. It felt semi-peaceful. And then we only got about, you know, a day and a half, maybe two days of that. And then we were thrown into fluctuation again. And that fluctuation started with Jupiter going retrograde and really, you know, turned up the volume and magnified our, our state of thinking, our state of focusing, our state of feeling and turn the volume all the way up over exaggerating our emotional state. Things are not as big, not as bad, not as overwhelming as they actually appear right now. I think about, you know, that saying on your your side uh, the side mirror of your vehicle, like objects may seem closer than they actually appear or whatever they say. That's kind of the vibe of our emotional state right now. Everything is being kind of overly enhanced due to the electrical storms, due to the solar flares and due to a lot of the planetary shifting. So it's good to know that I'm not going to say that we're not going to have any emotions because that's why we're here. That's why we're humans. Uh, to have the emotional experience, but things are going to be a lot more, I'm going to call it stabilized the minute that Mercury moves into this Scorpio energy. And then again, we got to get this full moon over with, we got to get Venus out of the Scorpio energy and kind of more optimistic than anything else. Uh, in the Sag energy, she's going to open up our heart space, make us have a little bit more fun. We're going to be really kind of experimenting and exploring with different situations and circumstances to kind of build a realm of reality that looks good, that feels good, that's more stabilized in our emotional realm. And so we get through the full moon in Aries, we get through Venus's, um, you know, transition into the Sag energy. And then, you know, on the 22nd, we're moving into Scorpio season. And although Scorpio season is kind of dark and kind of intense, and people are a little bit, you know, avoidant of it, it is a fixed sign and fixed signs move into stabilized energy. And it's a water sign. So that means that our emotions and our intuition is going to be stabilized. And because there is an innate sense of knowing because our higher selves really come online very strongly, um, a lot of the uncertainty, a lot of the questioning that we've been doing, a lot of the doubts that we've been having, a lot of the insecurities that we've been sitting in, a lot of that is going to be resolved. And, and albeit, let me just say, it may get resolved by receiving, you know, harsh truths and harsh realities coming at us. But guess what? We've been praying for clarity. And that doesn't necessarily mean good news, doesn't mean good indicators. It could mean bad. And I'm not always trying to be negative, Nancy, but guess what? Humans don't learn when things are good. Humans only learn when our backs are against a wall, when we're frustrated as F, when we can't take it any longer. That is the only way we open ourselves up to change and transformation, which Scorpio season is definitely going to lend us. But we're not there yet. We have to get through a little bit more of this Libra energy, a little bit more of these, you know, transits coming at us over this next couple of weeks. And let me also just say the new discoveries, the new aha moments, the new realizations of what it is that we actually want, what we need, what we desire, the new realizations of secrets coming to the surface, the new realizations of information and details that we didn't even know that we need to know that now we know. And we now we're realizing that we needed to know this, even though we didn't know that we knew it. Now that's coming online. OK, and it's going to jolt us. It's going to skew our perspective just a bit. It's going to uh, make us need to alter our mind space, alter our emotional space in order to get that heart and head in alignment. And that's what we do in Scorpio season is that we take all the fragmented parts of self. We merge them back to in a state of completion, a state of wholeness so that we can move on. We can we can elevate, you know, it's it's the whole Phoenix rising situation and circumstance um, in Scorpio season. So we kind of have to burn ourselves down and everything around us 
and, and see that pile of ash in order for us to renew and resurrect ourselves in a stronger, more aligned, more wholesome type of form. So the shakiness that we're currently feeling in our body, again, there's a lot of electricity coursing through our veins at this particular point. You know, if the heart activations are becoming a little bit much and really affecting your blood pressure, of course, the shakiness could come from that as well. But a lot of the shakiness is because, again, we're just not feeling safe and secure on our own two feet. We're not really sure what's coming at us. We're hoping for the best, but we're essentially preparing for the worst. And it just doesn't feel good in our physical body. We're feeling that tension in our hips and our lower back. It's extending down to our thighs. It's being very magnified and accentuated in our knees. That's where we hold fear. And then if you follow it down, there's a lot of, you know, tremors and spasms popping off in our calves. There's a lot of clicking and twisting of the ankles. And I don't know about you all, but there's been a lot of situations and circumstances where my feet are so damn cold that I don't even know what to do with them. They are literally like a totally different temperature than the rest of my body. And, you know, cold feet, well, we're getting cold feet. We're about to take action and make moves, especially with Pluto now direct, even though we're feeling empowered to do so there's still a little bit of resistance, a little bit of hesitation to do so. I feel like our feet being cold and like our hands, our fingertips being cold as well. And again, just considering the fact that, you know, our feet are the connectors of the conduit that our physical body is with the, you know, Mother Earth, with Gaia, with the Earth plane. There's a reason because, you know, the electricity coming in from the higher realms of intelligence, from the higher dimensions of the cosmos, That's a lot of electricity coursing through our bodies and the connection, the soles of our feet, literally our soul chakra connecting with Mother Earth. There's a little bit of a change in the vibration and the frequency and the resonance of the electrical charge, not only that we're giving the Earth, but that we're receiving from the Earth as well. She's going through her own ascension process and we are the conduit from Mother Earth to the higher forms of intelligence. The fingers, the hands is because, you know, we're bringing the creator abilities online, especially with Pluto going direct at this 29th degree in Capricorn energy. This is what we've been working towards, bringing the creator abilities online and how we create is through the direction of the energy in our physical form that comes out through our hands, what we put hands on, what we can build, what we can create in our physical realms, in our reality. It's an energetic let's call it transformation into the materialistic realm. That's why many people have had a lot of hand injuries, you know, jamming your hand in a door, uh, cuts on your hands, breaking nails, you know, all kinds of weird different things have been popping off from the elbow to the tips of the fingers, if you will. And a lot of that is just because we have not been able to stabilize the energy in our physical bodies that we need to use in order to bring our creator abilities online. Again, the soul chakras, the bottom of our feet and our palm chakras, which of course are in our hands, they've been trying to come online for a very long time, but it's almost as if I'll give you like the car analogy. It's almost like the spark plugs in the car. They aren't all firing the same. And so, you know, some are leaving a little puff of smoke. Some are overly active, you know, giving us too high of a charge of electricity through that particular area of our body. Either way, the energy in our body is not stabilized at this particular juncture and really having an impact on our feet and on our hands, especially where the cold is concerned. want to talk about bruising you're going to have just random bruises like bruises that you're going to look down and say now how did I not realize that I was doing something that was going to create this kind of bruise like you're going to be looking at certain areas of your body and be like now how come I can't remember how I got that bruise like that seems like a memorable thing Not only is the bruising a little bit of old injuries and old situations and circumstances rising to the surface of our awareness, rising to the surface of our skin for release, for healing, for renewal, for resurrection, but it's also the fact that, again, there's a lot of pressure in our physical body with all of these energies trying to work through the meridians of our physical form that, again, the energy blockages from past pain and trauma being stored in our cellular energy is creating a little bit of a dam, if you will. And what happens is, is that in our physical bodies, we may have pressure points, especially in our veins. um, Because again, what trans what what what's being transported in our veins, blood, 
What is blood? It's memory. It's data. It's electricity. Okay, so there are going to be certain significant areas of our body that are going to be visual bruises to let us know that, guess what, something really had a lot of pressure built up in that particular area of our body to try and push that electricity through. So it is a good indicator, almost. I mean, bruises aren't fun, doesn't look good, they ain't cute, they don't feel very good. But in a certain, a certain extent to it, you know, bruising is kind of letting us know that there was a major blockage there and we were able to push that energy through. And the aftermath of that is that we're seeing this bruise, but that should let us know that that energy channel is now wide open and free flowing. And hopefully once that bruise kind of, you know, disappears, we're not going to see very many issues in that particular area of our body again. I want to talk about the fact that our ribs feel weird, like our ribs feel like they're clicking or like when you sit, you, you, you're you just you, your awareness is like, why do my ribs feel like they're sitting on top of something that they shouldn't be sitting on? Feels like they're clicking. Even when you take a deep breath, there's like this vibration or this clicking in your rib cage. Please just know that this is, again, kind of related to the heart activations where we're trying to bring more energy, more chi, more prana, more air into our chest space. We're trying to clear out some of the heavier weights that we've been carrying on our heart space. And the rib cage is kind of like the, let's call it armor that protects our heart space, that protects our lungs. And right now we're going through an expansion period. Again, Jupiter just going retrograde where we're, you know, just kind of pushing the boundaries of, of what we're able to do as far as bringing that air in. The air needs to come in in order to oxygenate our blood, in order for the blood, the data packets, the electricity in our blood cells to actually be transported to all areas of our body. And so right now we're just kind of taking on a little bit more energy, again, with the electricity free floating in the air. We're just taking a lot more in than we're not used to, and it just feels like the rib cage is not really handling the expansion of our lungs, the expansion of our heart activations in the way that it should. And it's going to manifest by just feeling like something's off, feeling like something's clicking, feeling like there's an air bubble under your rib cage as well. I want to talk about the hunger pains because this is like kind of rib cage area as well. We do have a solar plexus activation going on, which is right below your rib cage. And, you know, your stomach and your whole digestive system carries more nerves in that particular area of our body than anywhere else. And our nerves are kind of going through this destabilization period right now. And again, we're kind of in a heightened sense of awareness, um, not only due to the rawness, the vulnerabilities, the insecurities that we've been sitting in, but again, the electricity, the energy coming into our physical form. It's just a little bit much. There's going to be extreme hunger pains and then nausea. I want you to think of the scales, right? So scales represent the extreme polarization of two individual concepts. So let's just say on one side of the scales, we're super hungry, right? We can't stop eating. And even when we, you know, just finished eating, there is this hunger pain. And so what would be the opposite of that? Well, it would be the fact that we feel full, full enough that we feel like we're going to puke. And so here the scales of Libra season are constantly offering us these very polarized states of being. And because, you know, the electricity in our in our auditory system, in our basically all the inputs that we use, all of our five senses in order to bring information in from our outside world, they're all just being magnified. The ver volume's being turned all the way up. And with the increase of the electricity in the air, it just feels like we're overstimulated. And because of that, there's going to be, again, like we talked about, like this over-exaggeration of emotions, there's going to be an over-exaggeration of our bodily system, starting with either being so hungry that you just can't stop eating or so stomach sick that you can't even fathom eating. And that is going to swing back and forth until we find a sweet spot. So we talked about how there's like, you know, burning lips and dry lips. And we talked about, you know, kind of biting our tongue on a lot of things. We talked about kind of, you know, holding all of these energies into our mouths. It's also going to mean that we may experience some inflammation as far as our gums are concerned. I don't really think like it's going to be toothache-ish, although 
around the full moon in Aries, we could definitely have jaw pain, teeth pain. I just feel like mostly it's going to be due to the gums. It just feels like our gums are sore or they're reacting to certain foods that they don't normally react to. Feels like our tongues are a little bit more inflamed than normal. Like, you know, we have just like a fuller tongue in our mouths, if you will. It just feels to me like there is this energy buildup where we're kind of reaching a releasing point where it kind of becomes a little bit more evident of how much fire energy we've actually been holding in our mouth space. And I would say just to kind of feed off of that full moon in Aries energy, it does represent the head as well. And just because there's been dizziness, because there has been congestion in our heads, I would say that, you know, random headaches or that, you know, worm headache that we talked about, that moving headache may be a thing. You may have a tension headache. You may, may have just, you know, this overwhelming I'm not even going to call it a headache. It may just be like just a heaviness in your head. Like the bobble head is just getting to be too heavy and it's hurting our neck. And there's just all this energy from our shoulders up that is just like compressing our head space. And specifically when we get into the realm of that full moon window, um, I would suspect that those particular symptoms are going to be more of a focus than anything else. I just want you to consider the fact that, you know, the full moon in Aries is going to be a fire event and Venus moving into Sag shortly thereafter, also a fire event. And we're still in an air season and air and fire means explosion, explosion of inspiration, of excitement, of creativity. And, you know, in our physical bodies, we're talking about fire energy or what is red blood. And we're talking about air energy. So our headspace and the accumulation of a boil up, boil over point in our headspace. And so I just want you to be prepared that as we get closer to that full moon in Aries and that Venus is preparing to shift from Scorpio energy to Sag energy, there's going to be more fire energy in the cosmos and our elemental energy profile than there has been over the most recent of weeks. So the last thing that I want to tell you is that, you know, we've been experiencing different alterations in our dreamscapes. We've been experiencing, you know, different focuses in our dreamscapes. Some of them are weird. Some of them are cryptic. Some of them are nightmare ish. May I also just say that we're going to start receiving, especially once Mercury moves into the Scorpio energy, we're going to start receiving some very powerful intuitive insights. We are going to have premonition dreams. We are going to have certain details emerge in our dreamscapes that are going to lead us on a path in our waking lives to do some research, to do some exploration, to find the answers that we need in our waking lives. So our dream state is going to be super heightened. The sensitivities of our intuition are going to be super heightened. There's just this innate sense of knowing without any proof, any evidence, any receipts to back us up. We just know what we have to do what we have to pursue and what is actually our truth. So it's definitely going to be a different ball game that we are moving into here this week. And of course, we can just expect there to be some days, specifically speaking, when I took a look at this week's energies, you know, just how the days are kind of being presented here. Sunday, the 13th, when Mercury moves into Scorpio energy, going to be a busy day in the cosmos. 17 different aspects, which is a huge, huge cosmic day. The other day that I want you to kind of just put on your calendar is the 17th. And of course, that's our full moon day. That is Venus moving into Sag. We're going to have 14 different aspects pop off on that day as well. And then we get gifted with a moon day right after. So Friday, um, October 18th, we're going to have a quiet day in the cosmos. Cosmos, give us a little bit of time to settle down from the major events that will be popping off here this week, specifically on the 17th. And that moon day, the moon is actually going to be in Taurus energy. So that's going to help ground us out, going to make us be a little bit more present, really integrate a lot of the information, the energies that are coming at us this week. And we're definitely going to be in a good situation to wrap up Libra season. 
So guys, that is all the information that I have for you for this week. Of course, I thank you so much for tuning in. I thank you so much for the love and support. I thank you for showing up for me, but mostly I thank you for showing up for yourself. I hope we all have a great week. I'm sending you nothing but love and we'll talk to you soon.